welcome back. Um, today we're gonna learn how to paint with beets. And I'll be painting with the stems of my beets. So we'll be boiling them, straining them, cooling it, and painting with it. And what we'll be what I've done already is I've done a card for my grandmother by putting layers upon layers of beet juice. And you can see it getting darker and darker as I put more layers on. Painting with beet juice is a lot like painting with watercolor. It takes time and patience to build up layers of darker and darker color. And what I'll be painting with in this demo is I've started painting a planet. But before we continue with this painting, let's see how I got my materials ready, shall we? Here are my fresh beet stems. I've removed all the leaves. Then I've chopped them into smaller pieces, measured out four cups of water, and now I've brought that water to boil and I'm adding the chopped pieces of beets. Next I'll turn the heat down a little and boil the beets for 20 to 30 minutes. After they've boiled for a while, I'll scoop some out just to check the color of the juice. Now that the color is right, I'll carefully strain the juice by pouring it through a strainer back into my measuring cup. Be careful not to spill. You can discard the extra beet, beet stems and then let the cup sit to cool for a little while before transferring it into another container and cooling it in the fridge. Now that our materials are ready, we're ready to paint. What you'll need is a cup for cleaning your brush, so find a cup and put some water in it. You might need a piece of paper towel or extra paper to dry your brush on. Maybe try to find two different br uh, brush sizes and if you can't find a brush, you can also paint with a Q-tip. I'll be demonstrating with both. Now, like I said before, I started this card for my grandmother and carefully painted the lightest layers you see are the first layers. And then I carefully came back every few minutes after those layers were dry and added more layers of beet juice to make them darker. And so what I've done to start my picture is I found a piece of paper, and this is watercolor paper, with, which is designed not to ripple as much as it gets wet. You don't have to have watercolor paper. You can paint on any thicker paper material and you'll have a successful art project. What I did first is I found a circle and I used my pencil and lightly traced a circle to guide my first brush strokes. And then I used the juice and painted my first layer within that circle. And as you can see, it's dried in areas where the water, where there was more water, the edges were darker. And when there is less water, we have a lighter color. And so now I'll keep painting and adding layers of color of beet juice. And I'm painting a planet. I'm thinking of the planets I've seen before online and how they have a marbled appearance, right? Because what we see is their atmosphere. So there's no rules to it looking exactly like any particular planet. This could be my fictional planet of the beats. But what I'm trying to do is maintain that circle shape for now. And where you see puddles of water will be darker areas as they dry. So use your brush and paint within the circle that you traced. And we'll let this sit and come back to it in a few more minutes. Like I said, watercolor takes a lot of patience. Now that that first layer is dry, I'm gonna use my thinner brush to make thinner lines and more detailed areas. But you've noticed that it started to change the texture of my planet and started to make some areas darker and darker. 
And so I'm just carefully spreading more water on top of certain areas. The beet juice isn't super thick or dark. You could boil it down more to make it darker if you'd like. That would be an interesting experiment. Or you could add other watercolors if you have them or food coloring options as well. Once you have your colors, the strategies for watercoloring are pretty much the same. Just taking your time, adding layers, and being willing to stop and come back. And here, we'll let that sit and see what it looks like when it's dried. Now that that layer is finished, let's paint with our Q-tip and see what we can do. So I know that I got my darkest areas on my card for my grandmother by just putting some dots down and letting them sit, which takes a lot of time to wait, but who am I kidding? I'm definitely not going anywhere anytime soon. So I'm just carefully loading up the Q-tip and then just placing a couple dots on my shape. And then you can even use it like a brush to add a little bit more beet juice to certain areas. And then once this dries, we'll go over how you can add lines to create detailed areas and shapes and more texture. Now that our layers are dry, we can talk about adding lines and details. And you can use a pen maybe a Sharpie, or maybe you can find something that's similar to the color of the beet juice to color with as well, or even a pencil if that's all you have. And what I like to think about is I look at the edges where there's different values, lightness and darkness areas on the planet that I made, and I just emphasize those by going over them with something that creates a bold line. Thinking about the thickness, maybe using broken lines as well, but just kind of going with the lines that have been created by the overlapping areas of color. Notice how much those pop out. This is also a great way to go around the edge of your painting to make your planet stand out. Adding a little bit of a similar color. Oop. Looks like it's not drawing so well. Oh well. Going over with something even thinner to create a variety of types of lines. That variety of lines helps create a sense of texture and adds different levels of detail to your beet juice planet painting. What I've done is I've carefully layered my beet juice, let those layers dry as I build them up, gone over the edges with contour lines and details to make things pop out, and now I have a detailed picture of a planet that I painted with things I found in my kitchen. Now you can think about other things you can use, food coloring, other foods that might make other colors and all you have to do is boil it strain it be sure to cool it and then you can paint with it explore your kitchen explore your house there are plenty of opportunities to make art all around you i hope you enjoyed this lesson and until next time keep creating bye